So this is review question three for centroids, and this is for a solid of revolution rather than a flat plate. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out what line is what on this graph. So I know an x cubed graph gives sort of that you know elongated s or lightning bolt type uh, shape. So this one here is going to be my x cubed graph. Uh, this line is going to be my x equals 1. And I also know it's bound by the axes, x equals 0 and y equals 0. So it's this area here that I'm, I'm looking at um, as my, my solid that will be revolved around. So I see that it's revolved around the x-axis and that tells me two things. So if it's revolved around the x-axis then I know my limits are going to be an x value. And I know that my equation is going to be a y equals equation. Okay, and that's very important for you to know that before, before we go on. Okay, so my limits are values of x and my equation is a y equals. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out what my limits are and they're values of x which means I'm looking here and I want this here, this value here, and this value here. And from looking at my graph I know that it's bound by the uh, y-axis, so my x on my y-axis is always going to be 0. And I know it's also bound by my x equals 1 line, so my other limit is going to be x equals 1. So I'm going from x uh, from 0 to 1 on my x-axis and that's being revolved around. So let's take a look at what sort of uh, solid that's looking like. So this is what my shape would look like. It's going to have almost like a disc look to it. Um, so I know that my answer is going to be somewhere on the x-axis because that's the center, it goes to the center of that shape. Um, and I know that's, that shape is going to have, is symmetrical, so um, no, even if there's a little point at the end that's a little bit heavier, let's say has a bit more mass, um, that is going to be the same around that whole rotation. So I know it's going to be somewhere along that x graph, um, I, or the x axis I mean. I also know it's going to be somewhere about halfway along the shape on the x axis, because it's a little bit heavier um, or a little bit bigger as it approaches um, one. So I know it's going to be maybe a little bit more than halfway on that. Okay, so I'm going back to my math that I've done here, and my next step is to calculate my mass. So step two is to calculate mass. So I'm going to do that by integrating, so there's our symbol for mass, from 0 to 1, that's our limit, and I'm integrating that y equals x cubed plus 2 line. Uh, I'm squaring that according to the formula. So the first thing I'm going to do is simplify what that means, and that's x to the power of 6 plus 4x cubed plus 4 dx. So that, if I integrate that, that gives me x to the power of 7 over 7 plus 4x to the power of 4 over 4 plus 4x from 0 to 1. And I'm going to simplify that because I know 4 divided by 4 is 1. So that leaves me with just x to the power of 4 plus 4x to the 
to 1, which gives me 1 7th plus 1 plus 4, which all together is 36 over 7 units. And I'm leaving that in a fraction so that my answer at the end is accurate. You don't want to round too many times. Okay, so my next step, once I've calculated the mass, is to calculate my moments. Now I know um, from my graph, um, and whenever you're calculating uh, with solids of revolution, I know that my y coordinate is going to be zero because it's going to be along the x-axis. I'm rotating around x. It's going to have uniform mass around there, around the x-axis. So it's going to lay on the x-axis. And y is always zero on the x-axis. So I don't need to calculate my mx, but I do need to calculate my my. So I'm integrating that from zero to one. And the formula is x times the y squared. So in this case, my y is x cubed plus 2, and I'm squaring that. I'm going to expand that bracket, which is x to the power of 6 plus 4x cubed plus 4. Multiply my x through, which gives me x to the power of 7 plus 4x to the power of 4 plus 4x. So when I integrate that, I get x to the power of 8 over 8 plus 4x to the power of 5 over 5 plus 4x squared over 2. I'm going to simplify that because I know that 4 divided by 2 is 2. So the others can just stay the same. which becomes 1 8 plus 4 fifth plus 2, which is 117 over 40. Now my last step when calculating um, my centroid is to actually do the centroid. That's my last, last step. So like we said before, it's going to be on the x-axis, so my y-coordinate is 0. My x-coordinate, I'm going to take my my and divide it by my mass. So that's going to be 117 over 40 divided by 36 over 7 which is 91 over 160. So all together, my centroid is 91 over 160, zero. Okay. And 91 over 160, or divided by 160, is about 0 0.57. So if you remember back to our 3D graph that I shown, I said it should be somewhere along the x-axis and just maybe a little bit more than halfway, which gets us to about there, which makes sense to our 3D graph that we've seen.